Stop struggling and start living. If you want to begin your journey towards a more mindful and meaningful life, then it's time to break free from these five habits that are holding you back. In this video, we will discuss five habits you must stop doing right now to start living with purpose, according to Buddhism. Habit number one, stop comparing yourself to others. In Buddhism, the idea of emptiness tells us that everything is linked and nothing stands alone. When we compare ourselves to others, we create a fake feeling of being separate and encourage feelings of not being good enough or being better. Instead, understand that everyone is different with their own good and bad points and concentrate on getting better and growing yourself. In the teachings of Buddhism, the habit of comparing oneself to others is seen as a form of suffering, a manifestation of the illusion of self. This illusion, according to Buddhist philosophy, is a primary source of human suffering and discontent. When we compare ourselves to others, we are essentially measuring our worth based on external factors. This can lead to a constant state of dissatisfaction, as there will always be someone who appears to be more successful, more attractive or more accomplished. This cycle of comparison and dissatisfaction is a form of suffering in Buddhist philosophy. Buddhism teaches us to turn our focus inward and seek validation from within. The practice of mindfulness helps us to stay present and appreciate our own journey without the need for comparison. It encourages us to accept ourselves as we are, recognizing our inherent worth and potential. The Noble Eightfold Path, an important idea in Buddhism, gives advice on how to live without the pain that comes from comparing ourselves to others. The first step, right understanding, is about knowing what dukkha is and why it happens. When we realize that comparing ourselves to others can cause pain, we can start to stop doing it. Right effort, another step on the path, involves making a conscious effort to let go of negative habits and cultivate positive ones. This includes letting go of the habit of comparison and instead cultivating self-compassion and self-acceptance. Letting go of the habit of comparing oneself to others is a significant step towards reducing suffering and achieving inner peace. It is a journey of self-discovery and self-improvement that leads to a deeper understanding of oneself and a more fulfilling life. The Buddha once said, do not compare yourself with others, for you are a unique and wonderful creation. Make your own beautiful footprints in the snow. This profound statement encapsulates the essence of self-acceptance and individuality. Each one of us is weaving our own thread. Each thread is unique, valuable, and contributes to the overall beauty of the tapestry. When we compare our thread to others, we diminish its value and lose sight of its uniqueness. Buddhism encourages us to practice sympathetic joy. This is the joy that arises from appreciating and being happy for others' success and happiness without feeling threatened or inferior. It's about celebrating others' achievements without comparing them to our own. Buddhism teaches us the concept of non-self. This doctrine suggests that the idea of a separate individual self is an illusion. When we let go of this illusion, we realize that comparing ourselves to others is meaningless, as we are all part of the same interconnected existence. The only person you should compare yourself to is the person you were yesterday. Strive for self-improvement and personal growth. Not to be better than others, but to become a better version of yourself. This is the path to true happiness and fulfillment in life. Habit number two. Stop letting your emotions control you. Buddhism emphasizes mindfulness and meditation as tools to gain control over our emotions. The practice of insight meditation helps us observe our emotions without getting swept away by them. By cultivating a state of calm and equanimity, we can respond to situations with clarity and wisdom rather than reacting impulsively. Buddhism teaches us that emotions are not inherently bad or good, they simply are. They are part of the human experience and are natural responses to our perceptions and experiences. However, 
When we allow our emotions to control us, we can become trapped in cycles of negative thinking and behavior. The Buddha taught that suffering arises from attachment, and this includes attachment to our emotions. When we identify strongly with our emotions, we can become stuck in them, leading to suffering. This is where the practice of mindfulness comes in. Mindfulness, a key practice in Buddhism, involves observing our emotions without judgment or resistance. It's about noticing what we're feeling, acknowledging it, and then letting it go. This doesn't mean suppressing or ignoring our emotions, but rather allowing them to be present without letting them control us. The practice of mindfulness helps us create space between ourselves and our emotions. In this space, we can choose how we respond to our emotions instead of reacting impulsively. We can choose to respond with wisdom and compassion rather than being driven by fear or anger. Another important concept in Buddhism is equanimity, which is a state of mental calmness and composure, especially in difficult situations. By cultivating equanimity, we can learn to remain balanced and steady, regardless of the emotional storms that may arise. By practicing mindfulness and cultivating equanimity, we can learn to stop letting our emotions control us. Instead, we can learn to experience our emotions fully without becoming overwhelmed by them. This leads to greater peace, freedom and well-being. The Buddhist practice of mindfulness is a powerful tool in learning, not to let our emotions control us. It teaches us to observe our emotions without judgment, to understand their impermanent nature, and to let them pass without clinging to them. The Four Noble Truths of Buddhism provide a framework for understanding our emotions and our reactions to them. The first truth, the truth of suffering, acknowledges that emotional pain and discomfort are a part of life. The second truth, the origin of suffering, suggests that our suffering stems from our reactions to our emotions, not the emotions themselves. The third truth, the cessation of suffering, assures us that we can overcome this suffering. And the fourth truth, the path leading to the cessation of suffering, provides a practical guide, the noble eightfold path to achieve this. This includes right view, understanding things as they really are without delusions, right intention, the intention of renunciation, loving kindness and harmlessness, right speech, speaking truthfully, harmoniously and kindly, right action, acting in ways that do not harm ourselves or others, right livelihood, making a living in a way that does not harm others, right effort, making an effort to improve, Right mindfulness, developing awareness of the body, sensations, the mind and mental qualities, and right concentration, focusing the mind in meditation. Buddhism offers us practical and profound tools to stop letting our emotions control us. It's not about suppressing or ignoring our emotions, but about understanding them, managing them, and responding to them in a healthy and compassionate way. Habit number three, stop overthinking. Overthinking often leads to unnecessary worry and stress. The Buddhist practice of calm abiding meditation encourages us to quiet the mind and be fully present in the moment. By focusing on the breath or a simple mantra, we can train the mind to let go of distracting thoughts and achieve a state of peaceful clarity. Overthinking is seen as a form of attachment it's a habit of clinging to our thoughts and ideas, often at the expense of our peace of mind. This can lead to a cycle of anxiety, where our thoughts feed our worries and our worries feed our thoughts. To break this cycle, Buddhism teaches us to practice mindfulness. This involves paying attention to our thoughts and feelings without judgment. Instead of getting caught up in our worries, we observe them as they arise and let them go. This helps us to see that our thoughts are not reality, but simply mental events that come and go. Another effective method to combat overthinking is the practice of loving kindness meditation. This practice involves silently repeating phrases of goodwill towards ourselves and others. 
This helps to shift our focus away from our worries and towards a sense of compassion and understanding. Buddhism encourages us to seek the middle way. This means not getting too caught up in our thoughts, but also not trying to suppress or ignore them. By acknowledging our thoughts and letting them be, we can find a balance between engagement and detachment. Remember, the goal is not to stop thinking altogether, but to cultivate a healthier relationship with our thoughts. With practice, we can learn to let go of overthinking and embrace a more mindful and peaceful way of being. Habit number four, stop being judgmental. The Buddhist principle of loving kindness urges us to cultivate an attitude of compassion and understanding towards others. When we judge others, we often project our own insecurities and shortcomings onto them. Instead, try to see the inherent goodness in all beings and practice empathy and kindness. Being judgmental can be a barrier to our own spiritual growth. It creates a divide between us and others, fostering feelings of superiority or inferiority. This is contrary to the Buddhist teachings of interconnectedness and equality of all beings. Buddhism encourages us to practice non-judgmental awareness, a state of mind where we observe our thoughts and feelings without labeling them as good or bad. This helps us to see things as they are, without the filter of our biases and preconceptions. Moreover, when we judge others, we are often reflecting our own fears and insecurities. Buddhism teaches us to turn this judgment inward in a constructive way, using it as a tool for self-awareness and personal growth. By understanding our own minds better, we can transform judgment into understanding and compassion. Another key aspect of Buddhism is the practice of mindfulness, which involves being fully present in the moment without judgment. When we are mindful, we are able to see the true nature of our thoughts and feelings, and this can help us to let go of judgment. To stop being judgmental, we need to cultivate mindfulness, practice loving kindness, and develop a deeper understanding of ourselves and others. This not only enriches our own lives, but also allows us to contribute positively to the lives of those around us. Remember, everyone is fighting their own battles, and a little bit of kindness can go a long way. Buddhism also emphasizes the practice of equanimity. Equanimity is a state of mental calmness and composure, even in difficult situations. When we cultivate equanimity, we learn to accept others as they are without judgment or bias. This doesn't mean we condone harmful behavior, but rather we see it with understanding and compassion. Buddhism encourages us to practice patience and tolerance. When we are quick to judge, we often react impulsively, leading to conflict and misunderstanding. Patience allows us to pause and reflect before we respond, giving us the opportunity to choose a more compassionate and understanding course of action. It's important to remember that everyone is on their own unique journey. Each person we meet is facing their own challenges and learning their own lessons. When we stop being judgmental, we open ourselves up to the richness of human experience and foster deeper connections with those around us. So, stopping the habit of being judgmental is not an overnight process. It requires consistent practice and a genuine desire to understand and accept others. But the rewards, inner peace, improved relationships, and a deeper sense of compassion are well worth the effort. Remember, in the wise words of the Buddha, in the sky, there is no distinction of East and West. People create distinctions out of their own minds and then believe them to be true. Let's strive to see beyond these self-created distinctions and embrace the inherent goodness in all beings. Habit number five, stop trying to control the outcome. One of the key teachings of Buddhism is the concept of impermanence. Everything in life is transient and subject to change. By trying to control the outcome, we set ourselves up for disappointment and suffering. Instead, learn to accept the uncertainty of life 
and find peace in the understanding that everything happens for a reason. Buddhism teaches us that life is a series of natural and spontaneous changes. It encourages us to let reality be reality and to flow with it rather than resist it. When we try to control the outcome, we are essentially resisting the natural flow of life. This resistance creates tension and stress, leading to a state of dissatisfaction, also known as dukkha in Buddhism. The desire to control outcomes often stems from fear and insecurity. We fear the unknown, we fear failure, and we fear the perception of loss. This fear drives us to seek control, to try and manipulate our environment, and circumstances to align with our expectations. However, this is a futile endeavor as life is inherently unpredictable and uncertain. Instead of trying to control the outcome, Buddhism advises us to practice mindfulness and acceptance. Mindfulness allows us to be fully present in the moment, to experience life as it unfolds without judgment or resistance. Acceptance, on the other hand, is about acknowledging and embracing the impermanence of life. It's about understanding that change is a natural part of life and that everything, whether good or bad, is temporary. By practicing mindfulness and acceptance, we can learn to let go of our need for control. We can learn to embrace uncertainty and to find peace in the midst of chaos. We can learn to appreciate the beauty of each moment, to find joy in the journey rather than the destination. And most importantly, we can learn to live a life that is in harmony with the natural flow of the universe. A life that is free from the unnecessary suffering caused by our desire to control the outcome. The only thing we can truly control in life is our response to it. So, let go of your need for control, embrace the uncertainty of life, and find peace in the present moment. This is the path to true happiness and freedom, according to Buddhism. Buddhism also emphasizes the practice of detachment, which is closely related to the concept of not trying to control the outcome. Detachment doesn't mean that we should stop caring or become indifferent to our actions. Instead, it's about releasing our attachment to specific results and accepting whatever comes our way with grace and equanimity. When we are attached to a particular outcome, we create expectations. And when these expectations are not met, we experience disappointment, frustration and suffering. But when we practice detachment, we free ourselves from these self-imposed constraints and open ourselves up to a wider range of possibilities. Detachment allows us to be flexible and adaptable to respond to life's challenges with a calm and clear mind. It helps us to stay balanced in the face of success and failure, gain and loss, praise and blame. It enables us to enjoy the process without getting overly consumed by the end result. Buddhism encourages us to cultivate compassion and loving kindness, not just towards others, but also towards ourselves. When we stop trying to control the outcome, we often make mistakes and face failures. It's important to treat ourselves with kindness and understanding during these times, to learn from our mistakes rather than beat ourselves up over them. So, letting go of the need to control the outcome is a liberating practice. It reduces stress, increases our resilience, and enhances our overall well-being. It allows us to live in the present, to fully engage with life as it is, rather than as we think it should be. It's a journey of self-discovery and personal growth, a journey towards true freedom and happiness. As the Buddha once said, in the end only three things matter, how much you loved, how gently you lived, and how gracefully you let go of things not meant for you. So let go, live gently, love deeply, and find your peace in the uncertainty of life. This is the essence of Buddhism. By letting go of these habits, we can align ourselves more closely with the teachings of Buddhism and embark on a path towards inner peace, self-acceptance and enlightenment. Remember, the journey of self-improvement is a continuous one. 
and every step you take brings you closer to becoming the best version of yourself.